Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chai Chats. My name is Reverend Thomas, and I'm very happy to have with us today Reverend Father Vijay Thomas. Uh, Vijay Achin is currently serving the St. Spasalios and Gregorios Orthodox Church in New Jersey for the past eight years. Um, Vijay Achin, thanks for coming on with us. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's great to be able to talk with you, and it's a very interesting subject that uh, we're going over today, which is navigating social media. Now, I know this is a big part of everyone's lives. Um, so just wanted to start it off by asking you, how do you think that social media has affected or changed the world that we live in today? Sure. So I come from that middle generation, right? That generation where um, I grew up where we didn't have social media, but then I saw it coming coming up. So I saw all the different things we had. Uh, we started off with uh, AOL Instant Man, uh, Messenger that then uh, we all went started going into G chats and then we started going into Friendster and then we started connecting finally through Facebook and now Instagram and, and all the other platforms that there, Twitter and all the other platforms that are there. So I've seen both sides of, of uh, life in a, in a way. It definitely has changed. You know, I think there is a change in our attention level, our attention spans, right? Like we're able to be distracted much more than we need. Content has to be like there's so much information that content has to be done very succinctly, has to be done very quickly. And so, you know, you go from uh, videos used to be, you know, 30 minutes long. And now if it's, it's longer than seven seconds, it's too long. You know, there, there's been changes on that. Um, on the other side, it hasn't really changed, too. You know, like it's just a new platform in which we try to show off to others and, and, and you know, express our. Uh, who we are and maybe even try to show, you know, our pride or our vanity as well. There are things that have changed or things that haven't. On one hand, like we see the change that is brought in our daily lives, right? And probably changed a little bit of how we perceive information or how we retain information, but also kind of those basic desires that we have towards other people. I think they probably still continue on just through social media now. Right. I mean, we, we, you know, before it was all about how you looked or how you dressed. And now it's not only about that. It's also about uh, what your online personality is and what your profile picture is. And I think there's a word for like how your Instagram pictures are set up. Uh, I don't know what that <laughs> word is, but you have to have that all lined up in a certain way. And that makes you a popular person. And I think this goes into the next question I had or from your ministry. What do you see as being some of the pitfalls of social media? Yeah, I mean, you know, as, a, as an Orthodox priest, you, you kind of you have to figure out what it is that our tradition and our tradition is a, a tradition of, you know, a, an ancient tradition, a tradition that is the way, is the life, is the truth. It's Jesus Christ. And, and, and so we have to realize that it has to determine even in modern context. Um, we have to use it in order to figure out, to light our path, to figure out um, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to social media, you know, just some of the pitfalls that I would, I would you know, just call up would be, you know, the fact of distraction, uh, the slothfulness. I mean, it, this is a big deal. I mean, people don't realize that laziness is a sin. Being lazy is not something that Christ wants us to be. You know, uh, my one of my favorite parables is the parable of the talents. And that's where Christ, you know, talks about, three different servants and one servant, uh, actually two of the servants end up, you know, increase, like they, they're given a certain amount of money and they're able to take that money and, and, and double it. Uh, but the third one just buries it. What the parable goes on to say is that person, that, that, that servant that didn't do anything with what he was given is thrown out. And so, you know, slothfulness is a sin. And the problem is, is that you know, social media kind of gets us a little bit lazy. Like it gets us, it, it, it's an indulgence just like watching TV is, but it's even more because it has a greater ability to keep us engaged. Um, so that, I mean, that's definitely one. And the, the, the problem with that is that if we're not using what God, the moments in time that God gives us, we are not doing what God calls us to do. So that'd be one pitfall, right? And the second pitfall I, I would think would be Vanity, you know, vanity is a overindulgence in our own appearance. And the thing is, on social media, we can make up our appearance any way we want. You know, I think uh, not too long ago, Facebook put out the avatars and you can like figure out how you look as a cartoon or we put up these 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 images of ourselves to display ourselves. And there's a certain vanity to that. And then we have to be careful with that. I'm not saying it's wrong to make yourself look good. 
I'm just saying that there is a potential pitfall there in that sense. And then the other is for those who are the ones who have to post things. And there's certifiable e- e- evidence. There's, there's studies on the fact that getting likes on your post gives you a hit of dopamine, which is exactly like any other addiction. That fear or pitfall of addic- addicted to the likes is, is a big deal. A couple more pitfalls would be distri- uh, disconnection, rather. Disconnection from the real world, right? I have had, I do a lot of mar- premarital counseling. And I also help with uh, you know, counseling for, for those who are married. And one of the things that I've seen is um, over and over again, couples fight about the phone. One, one person will be sitting on their phone, the other person trying to talk to them. And it just creates this, you know, you're not listening to me kind of scenario. And the husband or the wife gets very upset with each other saying, you know, can you just put the phone down for one moment? And we become disconnected from the real world because we're so connected on that fake world. And then finally, I would say that this is, especially for college students, I think would be one of the bigger issues is this like spreading of, of the seeds of weeds, if I, I, I could say it like that. Spreading the seeds is a term that we hear from the church fathers. They talk about the, the spreading of the word, the seeds of the word. The word of God spread and, and the seeds of that are all around. Now, what does social media do? There's a spreading of seeds, what I would say the seeds of weeds, rather, because what happens is on social media, you see a lot of posts about lusts, a lot of posts that get you angry, a lot of posts that get you envious. So it plants in our hearts these weeds that we have to pl- uh, pick out. So, you know, these are just some of the pitfalls of social media. Right. And I think a lot of us can probably relate to all of those things that you said. I mean, starting with the distraction part, you know, it's very easy, especially now that we're all sitting at home to just spend hours on social media and you don't even realize it at times. Um, But you're just always scrolling for your phone. It's interesting, like sometimes even I'm, I'm very guilty of it. You know, I'll be on Instagram for a long time, then I'll close out of it, maybe answer a few texts and then I'll go back to Instagram. Just And it's like, in my mind, I'm like, maybe something's changed and nothing's really changed. You know, nobody's really posted like that. And then even like when we post things, you know, we have to have the right filter on everything. Got to make sure it's the right caption, right? The right hashtags. You know, it can be a little bit too much about the perception. And then like you said, after you post, you're always rechecking, you know, every time to see, okay, did I get a like here? You know, and who liked it? And wondering why certain people haven't liked my post yet. You know, and that really gets ingrained into us that, that habit of wanting that, not attention or, but maybe like approval from other people too. So I think a lot of us can relate to the pitfalls or the struggles of social media, even if we may not realize it in the moment. But on the other hand, it's not all bad. It's not all evil, right? So what would you say are some of those benefits that we can gain from social media? Yeah, so benefits, you know, I think in moderation, social media can be good. Anything taken to the extreme is going to be bad. In moderation, it could be good because it creates an avenue to connect, to learn, and to kind of get a pulse about the environment. I know that social media has changed, even like, for example, our, in, within our MGOCSM, it has helped to bridge gaps between youth living in different cities. When you go to leadership camp, you have no real way of connecting and keeping you know, track of people. I don't know if you know this, but I met my wife in 2003 at a conference in Chicago. She's from Chicago. I'm from New Jersey. And the thing was, I wasn't on social media at the moment. I, I, I was, but I wasn't active on it, really. It was like Facebook was just starting out and really only using it between friends at, at, in college and high school. So I didn't connect with her. We never connected again until years later, we met up again at another conference and, you know, we hit it off. And I mean, I, I'm thankful because I wasn't ready to really meet her at that moment. And, and so, you know, we, I'm thankful we didn't connect and, and keep in touch, but we could have if we had that so, had social media. And the, what I loved when Facebook first started was that it, connect, it connected me with, the, with my high school friends. So like I, you know, when I left see my senior year of high school, I really wanted to keep track of everyone and keep in touch. And it was really difficult to do so. And then all of a sudden Facebook came out and it was easy. You know, you can even meet new people in college and find out, you know, keep track of that, like know who those people are. So I, there is a benefit. Even now, like years ago, I went to, for my seminary education, I went to India and I met and I, I stayed at the seminary in India 
And a lot of those seminarians who now are Achins in India, I keep track with, and we're still friends and family in India and people all over the world. And I think that avenue to connect with people that you wouldn't necessarily connect with is great. Like, especially during this lockdown t- period, it was really important to have those connections. And I think that's a good point to bring up is that used in the right way, I think social media can really connect us to many different people you know, across the world. And I think that sort of gets into the next point of like, you know, what are good practical habits for us on social media to sort of maybe avoid some of those pitfalls and fully engage in all of those benefits? Sure, sure. I mean, it, it has to come down to practicality. What what can we do? What are what are some good ways of using it? You know, trying to, to keep rules into what you do on social media. If you try to keep social media as the avenue to connect with friends and, you know, just see the pulse or see the latest news, that's fine. When you make it its own thing where you are trying to get likes or you're trying to you become addicted in that way, you know, th- that's getting going too far. So always keep the objective and purpose of what you're doing on social media clear. This will actually help a lot when, and I think we can talk about this a little bit more later, would be, you know, when you come across a post that you don't like or when you get into a Facebook argument that's going down this, this negative path. Always remember your objective, that this is for what? This is for me to connect with my friends, see what's going on, and just get that pulse and connect with the world. Use that as the first objective. And then another practical thing to do, though, would be to set time limits. I'm a father of two kids, and my my daughter is uh, four, almost going to be five, and my son is just turned three. Even at the youngest of ages, they knew when I was paying attention to them and when I was looking at my phone. They knew the difference between me looking at my phone And that I wasn't giving them their full attention. So there were moments, you know, especially when one of my children would be upset, that they would take my phone and throw it because they wanted my full attention. And so what I've learned is that I I need to keep my phone away. An easy time would be, you know, after work, when I don't need my phone, from five to eight, I could just make that family time and put my phone in, in a drawer and close it. Someone really needs to reach me, they'll reach me. But other than that, I don't need to keep looking at it. So create those time limits of when you're going to use it and when you're not going to use it. And, and then set those no phone time times where it's a block of time when your phone is completely away from you. You know, one practical advice, even when you're working, that I would give is that when you are, and what, what I used to, when I do at work, for example, is I would actually sign out of Instagram and Facebook when I was at work. The reason being is it's just so much harder to sign back in that it would stop me from signing back in. Because, you know, I think you were just mentioning like, you know, you look on Instagram, then you go back to look on Instagram. And a lot of the times that happens is like you're saving a Word document and all of a sudden, you know, you see that goal image and it's like it's take the the, the computer's taking a moment to load. What am I going to do in that 30 seconds or 10 seconds? Pick up my phone and check Instagram. And so once you do that, you've not like you're on there for a good another 10 minutes. So you might as well log out and keep that as a no social media time. And I think that's a, you know, a funny point that you bring up. I think you mentioned earlier that, you know, if there are any video posts that we see on social media, it can't be too long, right? And even so, that's comments that I think I've heard on in Chaya Chats itself. It's like, hey, maybe we can cut down the time a little bit, right? And I get it. I get it. It's a long time sometimes. It's hard for us to have an attention span so long. But on the other side of it, it's hard for us to not have anything grab our attention. Um, like you said, right? If we're just sitting there sort of waiting for things to happen, we need something to keep our minds occupied. I think it's, it seems like it's difficult to, you know, we don't want to have to spend too much time on one thing. But it's like we always need to have something at least to, you know, distract us from. Right, right. You know, I was just, you know, adding to that, I was just thinking about, you know, in weddings, like it was all the rage back in the day to, um, to have a slideshow. So you would have a slideshow with pictures and everyone would be like, oh, this is so cool. And then we post that online on YouTube somewhere and everyone would watch those slideshow pictures. Now no one would even spend more than a minute watching a slideshow of pictures. I had to start, you know, um, during the, um, the lockdown, I, I I wanted to connect with my youth and, and, and help the MGUC of our church. So I, I started a one minute orthodoxy videos. The reason I made it one minute video uh, videos is because I knew that youth today wouldn't watch more than a minute. (laughs) And so if I put a five minute video on, uh, you're going to get 
you know, m- people watch maybe the first 30 seconds. <laughs> so mm-hmm. if I can keep it to one minute, it, I might be able to, to grab attention and help, you know, during that time. And I think that, you know, sort of goes into like the current events that we have, like you said, during the lockdown, um, you wanted to put something out there. And I think during uh, this time, especially, I think social media has been great or technology itself has been great in trying to reach people who are at home, right? So, and especially with everything going on with COVID-19, of trying to at least keep the faith going through technology uh, with churches being shut down. And I think even more recent news, you know, we talked about this in one of our recent episodes about George Floyd and the protests that have been going on and the movements that have been going on. And there's a lot of social activism going on through social media, right? And so I think like, especially in current times, that this has been a huge factor of how do we use these platforms. Yeah, I mean, that, what we're mentioning here, this is, this is the, the thing that's going to, is really a, a major linchpin for the current society, right? Like, the fact is, is that we have a abundance of information. We have an abundance of opinions. We have a lot of misinformation and a lot of, at the same time, we have a lot of more videos and more content that helps us to know what the truth is. There's a good and a bad, right? There's a good in the fact that we're able to know that George Floyd died not by, by, by the fact that he died, uh, his death was, was, was a murder, right? We have the proof evidence because of social media, because of videos. But at the same time, you have a lot of other things on social media that create disinformation, right? It has this good, bad aspect to it, spreading information uh, about what is happening, but also kind of locking us into certain channels. And with COVID-19, I think there was a point where even myself, I was so locked into finding the latest news about COVID-19 that it affected my psyche, like where I was you know, over, gripped by fear, right? Gripped by what's going to happen. You know, in, in New Jersey and New York, we, we, we were really hit by it harder than others in, in other, other areas. And um, you're just so worried. And it's when you kind of took, like when I take a break from it, I had to like take a break from it and separate myself from it in order just to kind of breathe. And I, I think that's important too, is that there's a lot of, I don't want to say like negative news, but, you know, a lot of things that are going on in this world are not, you know, they're not happy things, they're not good things, right? And I think because we're being fed a constant stream of that type of information on social media, it's very easy to get stuck in that that mindset of, man, there is a lot of bad stuff going on and this world is, you know, in a bad spot, right? And everyone's talking about how the year 2020 is just, you know, it's been a terrible year so far, right? right. So I think that's also... You know, because we expose ourselves to so much of that, kind of hard to get out of that mindset sometimes. Well, I, I will I'll definitely say 2020 has been a <laughs> difficult year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it, it was enough when Kobe died, and then we had to have everything else happen. So. Mm-hmm. And going into what we've talked about current events-wise, uh, especially with George Floyd and, that, and the whole situation that has happened even after that, I think you mentioned this before about getting into the right conversations on social media, but not being hateful or angry towards others. And I think sometimes we might fall into that. People have an opinion that may not necessarily agree with ours, or, or they post something that, you know, is just really out there and we don't agree with it. And, you know, our first response is just attack them or to put them down or to discredit them. Um, instead of maybe even just listening to what that opinion might be. But, you know, it seems like social media kind of gives us the ability to do that because, you know, it's easy for us to hide behind a screen and to say words or have conversations that we may not necessarily do that if we were in person talking to that to them. So how do you see like the best way to navigate through that? Yeah, I mean, you bring up a major issue with social media, right? This this issue of, you know, the overconfidence that you have because you're able to hide in a way. Um, So you say, you know, people say things more openly um, without any level of compassion or, you know, desire for care or understanding. That automatically leads to greater arguments that can't necessarily ever be solved and only end up leaving us with more anger, more frustration. The hard part about this is just that 
again, I would say is that there's a lot of misinformation out there, you know, like the government has evidence of bots being used to push out misinformation, right? Mm-hmm. And and then for someone to post that, it gets really, you can get really frustrated. I got really frustrated. I don't know if you remember, it was, it felt like, a, 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 you know, a while back now, but there was a, a documentary, a so-called documentary called Plandemic that came out. It was about the fact that COVID-19 was all a, a hoax and that it was cooked up and it had all this, it had all these conspiracy theories revolved around it. And um, I kept seeing sensible people posting it saying, oh, this is really interesting. And then I didn't know, you know, necessarily what to take. So I, I watched the video, but then I, I just was so like turned off by the fact that people could actually believe that this video was true. Because the thing is, for me, for us in New Jersey and New York, like we know people who've passed away. We know people who, who have been affected by this, by COVID-19. So for, then for someone to come out and say that this is a hoax was like the, the rage in my heart was, was, you know, I just wanted to go out and like rip that video off of the Internet and 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 like scream at all of the people who were posting it. And even if they were posting going, oh, this is interesting. I don't know if this is true or not. I'd be like, well, you're sharing it and you're, you know, giving it platform. And so I was, I was getting really annoyed and I, I just had to take a moment and take a deep breath and kind of push it off and say, you know what, like, you know, I posted myself saying, hey, uh, this the reasons why this is false and encourage people not to, you know, to, to take that misinformation. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want to engage or get caught up in any kind of argument with people that would end up hurting my witness or my relationship with others. You know, we, we're called to love. The first and foremost commandment is to love God with all your heart, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. That's the second. And to love your neighbor as your second, if we keep that as our guiding principle, that helps us to understand how to deal with social, in social media. You know, the thing is, what we say, especially on social media, is harder to be taken back. You can delete it, but someone can always screenshot it. So mm-hmm. you always have to be careful what you say. And I think one of the key principles that we might not get, because we always hear love God, you know, the, the word love with the fact of Christian calling. But, you know, in the church, in, in scriptures, it talks about, you know, Paul talks about excommunication from the church. So even excommunication is allowed in the church. And the reason for it is, well, in the situation Paul was talking about, the person who was sinning was sinning and hurting the community. And Paul said, separate him from the community and don't separate him out of anger or anything like that separate him for his own salvation in a way i'm not saying that blocking people is sanctioned i'm just saying that it's okay to you know i would say this i would say this easily if there's a bad friend in your life that's causing you problems you can love them from afar <laughs> right? right and the same way happens on social media if there's someone who's just argumentative and creating tension in your life you can unfollow that person. That's, there's no problem. You can pray for them. You don't need to l- allow yourself to become taken out of your own peace, the peace that God gives you by dealing with you know, whatever they're posting. And I think that's a good point of that when these arguments or conversation might happen on social media, you know, a lot of times it might be even be with strangers. You don't know, right? But you, know, you really just get into it with them. So in that sense, right, like, it might even be easier because we don't know who that person is in the same way that we're so willing to engage in maybe in an angry or hateful conversation. It might be a little bit easier to step back from it too. But also in the same way, I've also seen posts recently about along the lines of even for my friends, if you say something that I don't agree with, you're not my friend anymore. Right. And I think like sometimes with the people closest to us, we may be a little too quick to resort to anger, to anger or to, you know, cut them off, right? And I know, like, we want, like, you you talked about misinformation. We want to spread truth, right? But even, I think St. Paul says, speaking the truth in love. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, St. Paul does say, speaking the truth in love, like that our calling is to truth, right? and our calling is to love. And so it's really important how we engage with people online. You know, I, I will not deny that there are trolls and bullies on social media. There are people that spend, you know, you, you can go to their profile and see that they post something like one, one post per hour. And you're just like, wow, like, you have anything else to do? 
And honestly, it's because they uh, have spent a lot of time and they, they, that might be because they're trying to become an influencer or whatever it is. But at the same time, you got to realize that engagement for some people, they might just be making it into an argument for the sake of the like. And there is no you know, desire to actually come to a final resolution. One thing I've seen over and over again is everyone trying to have the last word. I've had to have that feeling, you know, out of me. I remember there's one story where one of my friends, she had a, an atheist friend who posted something negative about, about God. And she asked me, can you respond to this and, and, and you know, debunk it? So I responded, debunked it, and we went. And then it became this back and forth conversation where at the end of it, I was wasting half my day on it. The, the argument and had completely faded. It was like... If you actually took the logical, philosophical look at what was being said, like, we, we left it many, many comments ago. And the only reason we kept posting was because we were, each of us were trying to have the last word. Since then, that was many, many years ago, I've, I've made it a policy that I don't care if I, if I have the last word. I'll post what I need to post if I have to post something and then, and then leave it at that. And I think this is good that we're talking about this um, and we've mentioned the pitfalls before you know even in, in a recent episode with Jake Etchen when we talk about technology in general and in his video specifically we were talking about pornography and the access to it especially through technology but we're talking about social media used with technology and I don't think sometimes we connect like you said the the struggles that we might have to the devices that we're on right I think sometimes we might want to keep it separate and not associate the two um, because we are so attached to them. So, you know, you talked about pitfalls in the beginning, a lot about laziness and slothfulness and anger. Um, but were there any other ones that you see that are can be related to the use of technology or the use or the reason why people even get on social media? Yeah, I mean, this this idea you mentioned the word pornography, like so lust. There, there are a lot of provocative pictures and a lot of things that are on, and, and media on on social media. And there's a lot of things that are shared that put into your heart seeds that grow into something harder to manage. There's a scriptural passage, and I, I apologize that I'm, I'm not remembering the exact reference at the moment, but the um, the passage is, is a psalm passage that. Uh, a lot of atheists uh, will claim shows that, you know, the Bible is not that great of a book. And what the passage says is that dash the heads of the infants against the rock. Okay. Dash the head, head of the infant against the rock. And so it's, it's about the death of an infant, right? The, the thing is, even before atheists even claimed any, any, anything about this, the church fathers talked about this passage and explained what this passage means. And what the passage means is that when something enters into your heart, let's say it's, it's a picture of lust, something that just a, a lustful picture that, en- that you see, it goes through your eyes, enters your heart, and then it's sitting there. And it's going to, it's at that moment an infant. But if you allow it to grow, it's going to become into something much greater. And it's going to be harder to manage that lustful reaction or desire if you allow it to grow. So you get a dash against the rock. You know, we, the rock is the rock is Christ. Christ is the rock. So the moment that any of these, these things that lead us, it can be lust, it can be a- anger, it can be envy, it can be any of these things that social media can give to us, any of these passions, and we have to dash it when they're young against the rock. The thing that we don't realize, and what we were mentioning is, is how these minor little things can set us off, can set us off in the wrong direction. Part of our seminary education in America is that we have to, you know, go to India for at least six months. I went after coming back from India for six months. Um, I remember driving from the airport and I put the radio on, and I hadn't really listened to American music for a really long time, and I forget what 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 was on, but it was something that was on just a regular, you know, hit normal, you know, American top hits radio, and um, I was I was shocked, you know. Like in the sense of it wasn't a song that I, I think that would be, you know, it was a top 40 hit or whatever. And, and most people would be listening to it and have no problem. But because I spent six months away from all of that, when I listened to it, the vileness of it, like it, I could just feel the slime coming off of it. 
right? I'm a person that still, you know, I listen to music. I'm not like, you know, I'm not a hermit in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm just saying that what we don't realize is the images we see, the music we hear, the videos we watch all affects us. All It affects our hearts. It affects our minds. It affects our souls. And so everything you see on social media can affect you. And we have to realize that, right? And I would say, like, even when we talked about the evolution of social media over the years, I think it's important to note here when, you know, when Facebook came out, it was huge. And even then, that was probably a little bit before my time. But it's interesting, like now, you know, there's kind of been a shift, right? Not so much as on Facebook, but you really see a lot of Snapchat, Instagram, and even TikTok now. Um, you know, that, it's huge. I mean, I'm not even on TikTok yet, right? So, but it's like, that's, that's what most of, I would say, the younger generation is experiencing now. So, you know, do you see in any way how that changes the usage or you know what is gained from social media yeah i mean definitely the fact is is that there's uh, continues to be an evolution of social media right from from facebook to twitter to now the new generation i mean instagram's in the middle of it and then snapchat and tiktok is the latest and that evolution i don't know personally in my ministry i've seen there is a, like a difference in the sense of connection i don't know if it's maybe it's just New Jersey kids, I don't know if you guys or if you're a priest have had the same issue. If I try to like message any of my kids, I don't always get an answer, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I know they're on their phone, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, and I always find that interesting. But at the same time, like they're very engaged on these other platforms that I'm not engaged on, and it's like harder to reach because they're so engaged on those other platforms. I wonder. I, I think the, the 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 verdict is still out on what is the real you know sociological impact. Of social media on on the newest generations coming up like even tiktok is made all for what for one thing to distract you you know it's made to distract you to to create that like laziness slothfulness envy you know the lustfulness all that's there but that's the thing that's grabbing us the attention of most of our, uh, a lot of youth nowadays and i think that's as we wrap up here i think it's important to note too that you know, not to fall into the trap of letting social media turn our social lives into very uh, shallow or I'd say like superficial posts, right? Um, you know, like you talked about in the beginning about like just the perception of how we look, right? And then creating content or posting content just to get the attention, right? And I think that can even affect our own personal relationships too when we're so consumed with these superficial things and not having that real depth or meaningfulness uh, to the conversations that we have or the things that we put out there that represent who we are as people. I mean, we have to use social media and use it for to benefit our souls and benefit the world, right? And, and mm-hmm. to be a, a beacon of light, you know? One thing that we did in my parish was uh, we created a, a campaign called Sending the Smiles. So we wanted, because there was so much negative news, we wanted to post, you know, something to make people smile. And what I've seen for myself, one rule that I've, I've had for myself is just to try to, to avoid getting into too many unnecessary work on those social media platforms and, and do, but then at the, at the same time, you know, create those connections, create those avenues of connections. At the same time, try to be an uplifting person for those who, who I'm connected with. So give them a word of scripture, give them something good, say a picture of me and my kids laughing. But at the same time, you got to be careful. You know, one thing that I just recently read, there's a book called Finding the Joy by a uh, Tassoni, which means a, a Kochima in the Coptic Orthodox Church. And she wrote this, and you can find it on Kindle, but um, she, she wrote the, the, in, the, in the book about the fact that, you know, we post, you know, pictures of newborns, we post our wedding pictures, and we don't realize that that there's that this one thing we haven't really talked about was envy. The fact that those who are not married are now looking at all these pictures of all their friends getting married, and then that's putting them into a, a, a like a, a like a pit of despair. Um, or women who are tr- having trouble having giving birth, um, having a child, um, seeing the pictures of newborns. And so what, we have to be responsible about what we're posting in all in all formats because we don't know what we're driving to other people, what we're, we're, you know, how we're affecting other people. So what she suggests in the book was say a prayer, say a prayer. If you're going to post a a picture of your newborn child, say a prayer for those who are struggling. If you're posting your wedding photos, say a prayer for those who are 
haven't got married and looking to get married. And I think that's a good point uh, that you bring up about you know being mindful of when we post things of what we have, being mindful of those who don't have those things. Right. right. Well, I, I think that's a good place to wrap it up here. Ajahn, I want to thank you so much for talking about it. For anyone listening about, you know, we're talking about social media. I hope you don't think that Ajahn's saying cut off all social media. For those who no. don't know, I think Ajahn's actually pretty active. Very <laughs> active. <media>. Yes. <laughs> so, Ajahn, I, I really do appreciate you talking about this important topic that's, you know, really affecting, especially the younger generation today. Thank you so much for having me. And like I said, for anyone who is struggling with this or for anyone who has any further questions, uh, you can find our information in the description below. But for those of you listening, I hope you continue to stay safe and please stay tuned for another episode of Chai Chats.